The next unit we're going to be covering is the unit on gravity. And you may be thinking that this seems silly because we've already talked about yet gravity for it seems like the entire year. But this concept of gravity is a little larger than just objects that fall towards the ground. There are actually gravitational forces that keep our solar system together, and there are actually gravitational forces between you and your iPhones that you all hold so dearly. So this is the equation that we will use to find gravitational force, where m1 and m2 are the two different masses of the two different objects, and r is the distance between the centers of those two different objects. And g is a gravitational constant, which is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, and has the units newton meter squared over kilogram squared. So let's do an example. We want to find the gravitational force between two 60 kilogram students who stand one meter apart. So we know that both of our masses are going to be 60, and the distance is going to be one meter, and we know that this value g is always going to be 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. So when we plug in our numbers, we see that this gravitational force is equal to 2.4 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons. This is a pretty small force and is the reason we don't find ourselves being pulled into our surrounding neighbors. Since these are pretty negligible forces, we typically don't really spend time doing these kinds of calculations. Instead, we want to find gravitational forces between larger objects like the sun and the moon. So, or the earth and the moon, planets. So this question here asks us to find the force between the earth and the moon. And here are the masses of the earth and the moon and the distance between the two objects. So we can plug in these values into our equation, and we see that we have a lot of pretty big numbers that we have to deal with here. So let's review some simplification steps that we can use to make this equation a little bit easier to deal with. So if we're ever multiplying exponents together, like in the numerator here, we can add these exponents together. So negative 11 plus 24 plus 22 gives us 35. So now we just have all those other numbers that we had before, and instead of times 10 to the negative 11, times 10 to the 24, times 10 to the 22nd, we now just have times 10 to the 35th power. And if we have an exponent to an exponent, like in the bottom of the in the bottom of this fraction or the denominator, we actually multiply these two together. So we get 8 times 2 is 16. And take note here that the 3.8 is also still squared. So lastly, whenever we have an exponent divided by an exponent, so we have like times 10 to the 35th here divided by times 10 to the 16th, we're going to subtract them. So we get a power of times 10 to the positive 19th, so it goes in the numerator. And now we see that we just have all these other numbers here, which we can simply just multiply and divide out. And we find that this force is 20 times 10 to the 19th newtons. And in order to place this into scientific notation, we must find the first number has to be between 1 and 10. So we can simplify this to 2.0 times 10 to the 20th newtons.